Next, we're going to talk about the six steps to take after a tick bite. First, we will talk about removing and identifying the tick, then applying first aid, then testing the tick, next, beginning treatment, watching for symptoms, and finally, getting tested maybe. Step one, remove and identify the tick. Now, my favorite tool to use is the OTOM Tick Twister. Uh, since I've been seeing people with Lyme and tick-borne disease and seeing a lot of tick bites uh, from 2010 onward, um, I was using first tweezers and was really macerating the tick. It was just, it was a mess. And um, I just never saw that it went very well. <laughs> so I was looking for a different option and found this very specific product. Um, there are other products like it out there that don't work as well. Um, so I do recommend the Otom Tick Twister in particular, and they're actually from France. So the way this works is you just slide that tick twister along the skin under the, the body of the tick, twist and pull up, and it's, it's super easy. It comes off the first time you try usually, if not the second time, definitely. And it doesn't agitate the tick, which is great because we really don't want to um, you know, use Vaseline on the tick or burn the tick or agitate it in any way trying to pull it and press on it with a tweezer because um, it could put out its tick saliva even more into the host and to you and um, that could then transmit disease. So we want it to be swift, easy, simple. This is a great option. So also identify the tick. Um, you could also take a look at uh, my book or also tickencounter.org is an excellent site to help with identification. Step two, apply first aid. I like to use andrographis tincture on a tick bite. You could also use an antiseptic if you do not have andrographis at hand, or you could actually use the deer tick bite formula, which we'll talk about later. Um, but basically we want to use something, even rubbing alcohol would be at least something to put on that tick bite after uh, finding it. So um, unfortunately, this is not the nicest picture um, but when the tick is attached, it can release feces onto the skin. And if you're pointing at and touching or uh, moving your fingers over that tick bite, you might be moving the feces of the tick, which can contain pathogens into your wound um, to cause another you know, opportunity for infection. So I'm um, using andrographis, which is, uh, it has antibacterial and antiviral properties. Um, or something else would be great to uh, use. And I, I get really wonderful reports back from patients actually saying that they feel like their tick bites heal easier and quicker um, when they use this tincture on them. Next, we can use homeopathics as first aid. So after a tick bite, you can use Leadum 30C, three pellets under your tongue, three times a day for three days after a tick bite. Now, if you have um, a rash around the bite, or it feels hot to touch, or it's swollen, or it looks red, um, you can also add apis. You can take both the Leadum and apis, 30C, and that's also three pellets under your tongue, three times a day, for three days after a tick bite. Now, of course, please note, if you're seeing a rash, especially two inches or more in diameter around this bite, that is a time to call your doctor. Very important to investigate if this is a sign of Lyme disease. So you can still use the homeopathics and if you have them at home, that's great, get started on that. It's gonna help your immune system work better, um, but it's not going to treat Lyme. It's not gonna kill Lyme. So if there is Lyme or a tick-borne disease there, we need to add appropriate treatment. Step three, test the tick. Find out the type of tick and what pathogens, if any, the tick is carrying. So sometimes this is a relief. We send the tick off and it's actually negative for pathogens, which is so nice. Um, but unfortunately, we know that the infection rates are going up on these pathogens and these ticks. So uh, the chances are more likely that there could be a pathogen in these ticks. And then finding out which one is very helpful because then you know uh, what pathogens it might carry 
And when you test the tick, you find exactly which pathogens it is carrying. And then you can look out for those specific symptoms of the diseases that can be caused by those pathogens. So um, tickreport.com is excellent. They have excellent technology. Um, they've taken part in a lot of research uh, throughout the country on tick-borne diseases and um, you know, identifying these pathogens and ticks. So tickreport.com is excellent. Another alternative would be technology.org. Um, so what you do is you go online, you complete the form, pay for it, then you send the tick through the mail, and then you will receive the results in three business days. Step four, begin treatment. So regarding ILADS guidelines, you could start some pharmaceutical treatment after a black-legged tick bite. Consult your provider about whether 20 days of doxycycline after a tick bite is right for you, especially within 48 hours of the bite. I like to use herbal treatments that are directed toward the pathogens carried by the specific tick that bit you. So we can use the deer tick bite formula, or we could call it the black-legged tick bite formula, but if you had a lone star tick bite, then we can actually design a tincture after the pathogens that are carried in the lone star tick. And so I go into great detail about every tick and every formula that I've formulated uh, in the book Preventing Lyme. So if you're interested in that, and if you're interested in knowing how to create um, these tinctures on your own, um, you can also learn about that process in the book. Um, for today, we're going to focus on the black-legged deer tick and go through that as an example, as the most commonly um, tick bite uh, gotten out there. Um, so let's talk about what these ingredients in the deer tick bite formula do. So they activate the immune system to function better in the face of tick-borne diseases. They target the free form of the spirochete form of Borrelia burgdorferi and other Borrelia species. They also target the round form of Borrelia burgdorferi and Anaplasma, Babesia, Ehrlichia, and Powassan, all those pathogens that could be in that black-legged tick. They also target biofilm to some degree and they protect the joints, neurological system, heart, eyes, and liver, which can be affected in the face of these pathogens. So what I love about herbal medicine as a naturopathic doctor, um, these herbs do more than one thing, right? Um, so using pharmaceuticals can be very useful in certain situations, and they're geared to do one thing very well. The herbs, you know, they actually work with the body. They're going to work with your immune system to help you fight off the pathogens, um, as well as having very specific antibacterial, antiviral, antimicrobial action um, to kill these pathogens. So here we have our deer tick bite formula. You can find this at Blue Crow Botanicals or Lime Core Botanicals and also on my website. Uh, so this has one part Cryptolepis, one part Hutunia, one part Japanese knotweed, and one part cat's claw. Um, so we can use this in two ways. So right now we're talking about after a tick bite. So after a known tick bite, I recommend one teaspoon of the tincture in water three times a day, typically 30 minutes before breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 30 days after the tick bite. So um, that's the time at which you'll also be watching for symptoms and reporting them. Um, but without any symptoms, the idea is to have this prophylaxis in place for those 30 days. The target pathogens are below. We've talked about those already. And then just to note, another approach that you could take would be a preventive dose for high-risk populations. So I work with a lot of farmers and loggers and uh, wildlife management folks, people that are just outside all the time for their jobs, or they just love being outside for, for their hobbies, like hiking or camping, fishing or gardening. So um, if you're one of those people, you might want to consider taking this formula um, at a half dose during tick season. So again, what is tick season? Anytime the temperature is above 28 degrees Fahrenheit, um, you could, and, and then you're outside and there's no snow cover, so the ticks could be in the vegetation and you're going where, where they are. 
um, that would be a time to consider taking a prophylactic dose in that way. So you could take a half of a teaspoon three times a day. And this dosage is based on adult weight. All right, moving on to step five after having a tick bite. Very important to watch for symptoms. So even with the deer tick bite formula or whatever the appropriate formula is on board, it's still important to report any symptoms that you find manifesting after a tick bite to your healthcare provider, hopefully a Lyme literate healthcare provider, especially things like fever, flu-like symptoms, a rash around the bite, a new rash, um, anything new. And this is quite a long list. Of course, this list will be adjusted according to whichever pathogen was found in the tick, and then look for those symptoms during that 30-day period or after a tick bite. Step six, get tested, maybe. So this is talking about testing you, the human, after a tick bite. If you develop symptoms after a tick bite, please contact your healthcare provider to report the symptoms and possibly get tested. The thing is, the accuracy of the test may depend on how much time has passed since the tick bite. So for instance, a Lyme test is not going to be accurate until four weeks after the tick bite. And um, anaplasmosis, though, on the other hand, important to note, so if you have a very high fever and the worst headache of your life after a tick bite, especially if you know it was carrying anaplasma, then a lot of these folks go to the ER or urgent care because it just is extremely disruptive and they're not really functional. Um, the anaplasma test is accurate at that stage. So you can do testing the first week, the second week after a bite or after onset of symptoms, and that will be accurate. So it really depends on the pathogen and the disease that we're thinking of. And ultimately, ultimately Lyme is a clinical diagnosis and needs treatment. So looking at medical history, if somebody had a tick bite and then developed a fever and flu-like symptoms and maybe other symptoms afterwards, it's going to be really important to treat that. We're not going to wait four weeks or three weeks or whatever it is at that point to um, test. Um, so it's really important to get early treatment and to be thoroughly treated 